moderating, uh, although we want everybody who's here to ask questions. If you've got questions, are Max and Ben and Bailey. So they are involved, Max and Ben are involved in Poli Sci Club and Pi Sigma Alpha, our honors organization. And Bailey is, in, is uh, the president of the Associated Students of the University of Missouri and is uh, really working on a lot of get out the vote efforts uh, all around campus. So I'll let one of you take it away. And everybody, I'm sorry, this is, I'm doing terrible host duties. So this is Brianna Lennon. She is, uh, she's been the Boone County Clerk since 2018. Uh, she is uh, not an undergraduate alum of Mizzou, but a law school and a master's of public administration uh, graduate of the University of Missouri. So you count. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And I suspect that we'll have people kind of coming in and going. So we'll just kind of keep track of the chat and I'll let people in if anybody gets hung up in the waiting room and I'll turn it over to Bailey and Ben and Max. Well, thank you uh, so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Um, so I have a uh, question just based on, you know, a lot of uh, what I hear from like students around campus. And I've heard like a lot of concerns uh, regarding the mail-in ballots uh, via the USPS. Where do you and your office kind of like stand on these concerns? So um, I have a lot of confidence in our local post office. Partly that's because we've established a relationship over the years in the office in the first place, but also because I've been working with our local postmaster um, pretty extensively in getting some accommodations set up. So we were able to um, get a new blue collection box that is now located right outside of the government center. Um, we have also been able to designate one of the drive-up boxes on Fifth Street over at Walnut on, for that post office to put a ballot drop box sign on it. So for years and years, we've always been able to um, have multiple trips to the post office on election day to pick up anything that they have. Uh, they're really good about a few days before the election putting the ballots into like direct to us instead of having to sort them for um, all mail that's sorted in Columbia, it gets sorted out at the airport and then it comes back to the carriers and, uh, or wherever it needs to be delivered. So um, they are checking the airport and the post office location at Walnut and the, uh, there's a office out on Limon Industrial Boulevard that also handles mail. So all of those locations are checked to make sure that there is nothing in their hands on election day. Um, with regard to sending it out, I also have no problems sending it out, especially if people are doing absentee voting, because as long as we can get the ballot to you, if it's an absentee ballot, you can drop it off at our office if you don't wanna deal with the mail. So if you wanna bypass it and you're voting absentee, then you can absolutely do that. But I also, have seen very few, if any, problems with people getting their ballot in the first place. So um, if I started seeing concerns there, then I'd have much larger concerns. But we don't hear from anybody that says, oh, we didn't get our ballot. They're few and far between if they do, and it tends to be um, either because they have kind of an odd mailing address, and, and occasionally we do have that where the USPS address and our address that we have from our uh, resource management side on the GIS side have a different zip code or it's drive instead of court that can cause some issues, but that doesn't have anything to do with delivery. Okay, thank you. Uh, what are some of the most important dates, uh, whether it be for mail-in or voter registration uh, for us to know um, so somebody comes in, they're a freshman here, and did a register in the state of Missouri. Um, what, what date does that have to be done by um, in accordance to the election? And, and just what are the, some of those important dates that we need to know? October 7th is the deadline to register to vote. And uh, one of the points that 
um, comes up a lot. We have a lot of questions about is, is that just for if you've never registered to vote before, or is that if you're new to Boone County? If you're registered in St. Louis County and you move to Boone County and you want to register in Boone County, it has to be by October 7th. If you're already registered in Boone County and you just move dorms or you move apartments, then you can do that anytime. You can even do that on election day if you want to. Um, but if you're changing counties, technically you're changing election jurisdictions. So October 7th is the date for that. If you want to um, vote by mail, the date to request it is 5 p.m. on October 21st. And with registration, if you register on October 7th and you put it in the mail that day so it's postmarked, that counts. That is not the case for ballots. Post, postmark does not apply at all to ballots. It's all about being in our office. So 5 p.m. on October 21st, we have to have the request in, whether that's going through our website or whether that is in the mail. So if you put it in the mail on October 21st, we're probably not gonna get it. Um, so those are the two deadlines I like to remind people of. Uh, and it's especially important to keep in mind now because if you register in Boone, with some of the uncertainty about whether people are going to be on campus or not. My personal opinion is if you establish a relationship with our office so you at least know where it's located or you know where our website is, I am more than happy to walk anybody through the absentee process so that we can get ballots counted for them. That's a much easier situation than having hundreds of people trying to figure out if they can register at their home address after the October 7th deadline or how to register to vote or things like that. So um, my preference is that if you live in Boone and you don't have a strong affiliation to your, to, um, your home address, like if you're not very politically involved at home or you haven't voted at home before, register to vote at campus because uh, we've got polling locations available and we have, um, I think right now, the only online absentee application in the states. There's a lot of organizations that are making absentee organ like applications that get sent through, but ours is actually directly to us. And so uh, it tends to be a little more direct. So I have kind of a two part question. And the first part is, when will Boone County be mailing out the absentee ballots? And the second part, I'm from St. Charles County, Missouri. So I was just wondering, is the day that Boone County mails the ballots like the same across the state or does it differ county by county? Um, so absentee voting starts on September 22nd. That's when we have to start mailing stuff out. So uh, whether that means that things get physically put in the mail on September 22nd versus everything gets put into a batch and they don't end up in the mail until the 23rd, I like to say it's the week of the 22nd, and if you haven't gotten it by like October 1st, then let us know. Um, I can tell you, we use our ballot printer is our mail vendor. So um, it's really easy for us to get the batches to them and then it goes in the mail. Um, and it's kind of an overnight process. So more, more likely than not, uh, everything we have up to this point, which we are at 8,300 requests already. I think probably by next Tuesday when we start putting out the badges, we'll be at 10,000 requests. Those will go out in the mail on the 23rd. St. Charles is also looking at using our same vendor for their absentee process too, so it's probably gonna be very similar. Thank you. So this is kind of a confusing question, but one that I feel like is important to sort of sort through. So if we were to be evacuated from campus and had to come home and students or residents of, of the halls or students uh, that, you know, have an apartment off campus have to move back home and their um, ballot has already been mailed to them, um, what should they do? Can a ballot be forwarded? in the mail or what it steps cannot, it take? Yeah, that's a great question. It can't be forwarded. Um, ballots just by their very nature under the law can't be forwarded. What can happen, and I think probably would happen if that were to happen is uh, we would be keeping very careful track of anybody that had a campus address that was having a ballot mailed to them already. 
Um, and we could either affirmatively reach out or if you already knew that you had requested an absentee ballot and hadn't received it, um, you can contact us. And it is not a big deal at us at all for us to send it to another location. We just have to send a second ballot. So um, that's perfectly fine. We have cases all the time where somebody uh, accidentally wants us to go to one location and then says, oh, actually in the time before, you know, they requested it way back in July and then they've moved now and they want their November ballot, but you know, they've moved. So um, that is not a big deal. And it's something where we will also be working on that if that happens. Um, the other thing that I recommend is because absentee starts on the 22nd, if you're planning to vote by mail already, um, just do it early because that's next week and you can start as early as that. We also have absentee in our office. So the other thing to know is if you have it mailed to you and you know that you're going to get evacuated and so you're going to have a, now you have a legitimate reason to vote absentee because you truly will be out of town, stop by the office on your way out of town and vote absentee in our office and then you won't have to worry about it. Hi, um, my question for you is, so I, I, I don't know if you have communication with other um, county clerks in, in Missouri, but would you say that they are as confident in absentee voting as you are? Um, I, yes, I think that we're all confident in absentee voting. I think that there is still some, everybody has a different opinion as to whether absentee voting is better or worse or whatever. Um, and I don't usually weigh in with any kind of opinion about whether I think that it's like the model of future elections administration. But in this particular time, I think everybody recognizes why it's happening and why so many people are taking advantage of it. So um, I will say we're extremely fortunate that we have a ballot printer that we got to partner with in order to make this work because 10,000 requests before absentees have even started would have normally shut down my office. So now <laughs> we have the ability to handle that and the larger jurisdictions are dealing with it. But it's funny when you look at, we do have a um, statewide clerks association. So we do talk pretty frequently. But when you look at the sizes of um, population that most of the clerks in the state deal with, you've got St. Louis City, St. Louis County, Jackson County, Kansas City, Greene County, Boone, and then it completely falls off. Well, St. Charles is one too. So then we're talking about lots of jurisdictions that have maybe 5,000 voters total. Okay. So even a huge influx in absentee for them might mean 500 requests, which is a lot because those clerks only have one or two staff people. Um, but it also means that uh, they can have a lot more direct and personal communication with the voters that they're serving. Thank you. I had a friend run for a county clerk in Osage in 2018. Um, and talking to him about it, his election got like really dirty. Um, and I know you had to run an election. Um, and tell me as like a nonpartisan office, um, and having to run under a party label, um, and just as hyperpartisan as the United States is now, how did your election season go? And how did you find a middle ground between like running under a party label, but running for a nonpartisan office? Um, so... I based my campaign on voter education and it was difficult, I think, and it still is somewhat difficult. I mean, people will call and expect like hyper-partisan answers from my staff sometimes. And I have uh, made a very concerted effort because I'll have political staffers, not that I don't love political staffers, but they call and they want part-time jobs and stuff like that. And I've tried to make a very conscious effort to really pick people that are apolitical, that have no stake in the process and don't even like get involved in what the politics of it are. They just care about elections and they think that voting is interesting. Um, so that's, I found that to be very helpful, but the election itself, I mean, I really wish that we could either run under no party label or not run at all. Uh, and that's what the, the larger jurisdictions have boards of elections for that reason. Um, it can, I feel like 
sometimes in the smaller jurisdictions, it gets dirtier and it's not just because of hyperpartisan stuff. It's just because in smaller jurisdictions, people tend to know each other much more intimately. And so they just get very personal in campaigns and you end up having situations um, like right now, one of the county clerks that I know of, her husband's running for sheriff against the incumbent. Like, I don't think that has much to do with partisan politics so much as that's, it's gonna be a, a dirty race and it's because like an incumbent is running against somebody else in the courthouse, their spouse. So um, I don't know in particular how the Osage stuff worked, but I will say uh, I was extremely happy that we did not have a hyper-partisan race in Boone. And I think part of that was because the election was really to replace a 35 year incumbent who had been pretty political. She was a Democrat, but was extremely well respected. Um, the situation was very strange because she had to step down. Governor Greitens made an appointee uh, to the clerk's office and that's who I was running against. And so both of us, and we were very similar. We both graduated from Truman. We we're both the same age. So it's a very like even keeled kind of thing. So it really just came down to like discussions about voting and education and stuff. And I had worked in the secretary of state's office. So I really just ran on a like, here's the stuff that I think we should do in the future. Things like more vote centers, like what's at Mizzou arena and things like that. Um, and it worked out really well. Cause I didn't really have to talk about the race so much as I just talked about how much I care about elections. Um, I have uh, a question. So you graduated from uh, Mizzou Law. And then after that, you know, like, what did you do? I mean, I guess just immediately after that, what was the move? <laughs> um, right after law school, I was hired in the Consumer Protection Division of the Secretary of the Attorney General's office. And it was kind of, I mean, I don't know why I went there. It was just available. There were a few things that I was looking at and that one seemed interesting. I fell into antitrust law and just did antitrust law for a little while. And then um, when I had been in undergrad and also the summer before I went to law school, I went to the Secretary of State's office and did some work and just really enjoyed the office. So uh, when there was a change of administration in the Secretary of State's office in 2013, I joined the Secretary of State's office. And that's, that's what started the elections path because I went from doing like trial work and that was part of it too. I figured if I was gonna do trial work ever, it's good to do it first to see if I liked it or not. Um, so that's why I went to the AG's office. I decided I did not like it. I still don't really like it, um, but I really like general counsel kind of work. So I did that in the Secretary of State's office um, and had been thinking about running for something, but really got to know so many county clerks and county commissions and stuff like that, that I, I knew I just wanted to go to the county level because the state stuff wasn't doing it for me. Thank you. You kind of hinted at um at this a little but like where can we go to vote and how do you know your voting um your your voting location um so everybody is assigned to a polling location if you go to our website which is vote.boonmo.org uh you can look yourself up by putting in your name and your birthday and that will show you your polling location and your current voter record uh, and starting next week, it's also going to say if you've requested an absentee ballot, absentee ballot sent, absentee ballot received. Um, and then uh, that will have a map to your polling location too. Um, we are also going to tomorrow, we couldn't spin it up fast enough today because I got, to be perfectly honest, I got a little surprised by the press release today. So I was not ready to put the... <laughs> the map viewer on, but we have a map viewer for um, polling places too, so you can look them up by address. And then in addition to that, uh, about five weeks before the election, we send out email and mailed sample ballots for polling place notifications. So we try to give lots of notice to people. Um, but we also have two central voting locations. Our office is one, 
on the ground floor of our office. And then now Mizzou Arena is also going to be one for November. And what do we need to make sure, um, like what do I need to have whenever I go to vote? Um, make sure that you have some form of ID. So your college ID is perfectly fine. Um, the voter ID card that we send you in the mail, if you've uh, received that, the driver's license, it can even be an out-of-state driver's license. Uh, if you have no ID at all, like you come, you don't have an ID, you can vote a provisional ballot. And it's not like the provisional ballots where you read, where people say, oh, they never get counted. It's a provisional ballot that all we're doing when we get it is checking your signature against your voter registration signature. And as long as they match, we count your ballot. So it doesn't have to do with eligibility. It's just confirming identification. Um, I don't, I have not seen in the four elections that I've worked on us ever um, reject a provisional ballot voted because of having no ID. We've accepted all of them. I, I have a question about uh, your law school experience. I'm interested in going to law school myself, and I've looked at. I'm only a sophomore, but I've kind of I've gone to the Mizzou's open house, to Mizzou Law's open house, just to check it out. So I was just kind of wondering if you could tell us like why you chose Mizzou and what you found um, to be like. Yeah, just why you chose Mizzou Law. Um, two reasons. One was cost, because it's much cheaper than most of their law schools. And when I was talking to people for advice, a lot of them said. Um, don't go really deep into debt because it's not worth it. You end up getting a law degree regardless of where you go. And the other was, um, which I think could go either way. If you're not going to go to an Ivy League, go to the place where is closest to where you want to practice. So I really liked state government at the time. Um, and I had done a bunch of internships in Jefferson City and I wanted the proximity to Jefferson City so that I could work in state government when I um, graduated. And uh, it worked out really well because you really can be there at a moment's notice. So you just kind of get a leg up over like the SLU law interns and things like that because you're literally right there. So right. I have a, oh, sorry. No, please go ahead. Okay, um, so just, you seem to be very passionate about voting rights and um, everyone's willing to do that. So what would you suggest students that are out of state do? Obviously, like, direct, like have a, you know, vote absentee, but like, could you t like tell someone, you know, where they should go to figure out how to do that? Sure. So if you, if you're out of state and you are here and you want to register here, or if they want to figure out where, how they should vote when they're out, when they want to stay registered, like in Illinois, but they are here physically. Yes, that, yes, the latter. Okay, um, so I would start at vote.gov. It has the full list of, like you can just put in what state it is and it has all of the um, different things that apply because every, I mean, the important thing to know is literally every state has different deadlines and different mechanisms. So uh, start there because that's at least put together by a uh, the Election Assistance Commission, and they've really stepped up and started to do more um, voter education. For a while, they just kind of like were a regulatory body, but now they're really involved in stuff. So um, vote.gov or just the Elections Assistance Commission are two really good resources. And then um, find out who your local election authority is. So here it's county clerks. Um, but in Michigan, it's in a much more um, local level and it's at the city level. So the counties are doing things like ordering the ballots, but the cities are the ones putting on the elections. So everybody's got a different kind of structure. Uh, so the important thing to do is get connected with who your local one is because then you can get personal attention too. I mean, we're all busy. We all have like an enormous amount of applications, but we all also realize that our main reason for even being here is to connect with voters and answer their questions. So I, I have never seen somebody gone longer than like two days without getting an email back from their clerk. And we're all very active. I mean, at least on Twitter, we're all very active on Twitter. Like I've gotten to know clerks all over the country because 
we all care so much that it's it borders on being annoying a lot of the time. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, I think that's a good like segue into I am a student moving to Columbia, even from like a surrounding area of Missouri, but especially like out of state. You know, why should I register to vote here? Um, the two reasons I usually tell people are uh, what you're voting on when you're here is things that affect you in the community here and um, the legislators that you elect here are the ones that are going to bat for Mizzou in the legislature. So it's important to know who those representatives are. Uh, and then the second reason literally is just convenience. If you um, want to vote it's just far more convenient to be able to go to a polling place if you need to or one of the vote centers um than it is to have to worry about absentee so um we're also i guess depending on where you come from i like to think of us as a much more personalized kind of county because we're very accessible we're right downtown um we're not too far removed from anything like I've walked to the university for meetings and stuff like that and it only takes 10 minutes. So uh, it's, I think that it's um, just kind of easier to do it that way. But that's also speaking as somebody that stayed registered to vote in St. Louis County when I was in school because I cared a lot about what was happening in St. Louis County. But I would say, look at what's happening in your community. Um, it's a good way to just get involved and interested in what happens in Columbia. So I do have a question for you, though, about absentee voting. So if somebody is, like you just said, from St. Louis County and is involved there and wants to vote absentee, typically Missouri requires a, uh, a notary for an absentee ballot. What is the situation with that this year? It's a little bit different this year, right? Right, so if you are voting because you are just absent, so if you're in Boone County and you want to stay registered in St. Louis County, so you ask for an absentee ballot due to being out of town, that's still going to require a notary. If you want to vote absentee because you are in an at-risk category for COVID-19, which means that you are immunocompromised or um, have moderate asthma, or if you've had COVID, um, at any time, then you fall into that category and that category does not require a notary. So it, it really depends on what excuse you use. And so we've tried to make it clear on the applications itself, which ones require a notary and which ones don't. Um, but if you do need a notary, our office is still available. So even if you want to do an absentee ballot in St. Louis County, feel free to come to our office and get it notarized before you drop it in the mail. Uh, the Columbia Public Library is also really good about notarizing things. So uh, we try to provide those services too. I, I, I too am a notary. So I, I'm gonna be doing some stuff around campus. So I, have, I just picked up my commission from your office yesterday. <laughs> really? <laughs> I did. So um, the um, okay, but so if you are a healthy 18 to 22 year old college student, do you recommend going the get it notarized route as opposed to claiming some sort of COVID exemption to getting it notarized? Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. that, that'd be the easiest thing and the safest thing. So that way, nobody's calling anything into question. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, I actually, I have a question just about um, how it's been dealing with COVID in like a public office. Like what has been your biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome? Um, for most of April, we, the whole building went down to minimal staffing. So luckily, so the April election was pushed to June. And part of the reason we were pushing for that was because of all the uncertainty of COVID and not knowing how the office was going to handle um, everything basically being shut down. So thankfully, 
very, it, I mean, it was very difficult because most of the stuff that we do can't really be done remotely. And uh, so it was nice that that was happening at a time we weren't preparing for an imminent election, but at the same time, it really threw everything off because then June blurred into August. And so we had so fast of a turnaround from June to August that August was really rushed and I didn't like that. Um, so it's been nice to have this time between August and November, but I mean, really the COVID stuff is the same as I think any other workplace is, which is, I, I hope we're all taking precautions, but I hope that we don't get positive cases. And so far we've been really good and have not had any positive cases in our office. So, um, I, we have the plan in place for what happens if we do, but uh, hopefully we won't have to use it, or if we do have to use it, it won't be hugely impactful or at a terrible time. <laughs> um, thank you. I, I wanna jump in. I have one, another question for you. Uh, you have a group of, of uh, people that are really interested in this stuff on the, on the Zoom here. Um, what are you looking for in terms of uh, college students to be poll workers? And how would somebody that's interested in do that pursue it? That is a great question. So um, poll workers and election judges, the way that we uh, utilize them for elections, they have to be in a political party. They have to at least designate that they're a political party. Um, but we need Republicans and we need Democrats so that we have a balance. Uh, we are always looking for more poll workers and we have a sign up on our website that you can go to. We also have additional tasks for election judges, like we have uh, people that change addresses at the polling place. So you're not really doing the work of a poll worker, you're sitting there and you're helping voters change their address in real time so that they can get the correct ballot, go to the correct polling place. And um, so if you are interested in being part of the elections experience, but you'd rather I mean, it's a high responsibility job because you're literally changing people's addresses. So uh, we do extra training for that. Um, but those are things that if you're interested in doing, uh, send us an email and uh, we can get that process started. And then we also need absentee judges. So with the higher number of absentees that we have, we're recruiting for people that are processing the ballots. We get to start processing the Thursday before the election. So the hours aren't quite as um, intimidating as working a 15 hour shift at the polling place, but we still need bipartisan teams. Those teams are the ones reviewing the ballots, opening the envelopes, separating the ballot from the envelopes um, and making sure that all of those ballots are accounted for and correctly uh, processed. So as like college students, um, especially like an organization starting to do a major push for voter education, what do you, like what's the biggest like knowledge deficit that you see in college students? Like the top things that you like wish college students and college voters knew about? Um, one is for voter registration purposes, one is that there's no timing for residency. You don't have to live here for 30 days. You don't have to live here for an hour. As soon as you consider yourself a Boone County resident, you can register to vote at your, at your residence. Um, and lots of college students, uh, once they figure that out, also use their voter ID card to prove their residency when they're doing their tuition. So um, it's good to know for a number of reasons, but there is no set date. And that's not true for all states, but for Missouri, you do not need to prove your residency in any way. Um, the other thing to know is it's so important um, to give us your correct residential address. So you can't leave off your apartment number. You can't leave off your room number. It has to say what it is because if it bounces back to us, then we have to start the whole canvassing process when we're sending out your ID card or your sample ballot because you get flagged in the system as potentially not living where you say that you do. And it's only because you didn't give us the entirety of the address. Um, so checking the address that we have for you 
So going to our website and looking yourself up, that's always something um, that I encourage people to do. And people don't realize that changing your address at the post office or just like in general, if you move dorms has a big impact and you do have to send us an update for that. So even if you move down the hall from room 130 to room 128, um, we need to know that otherwise you're gonna go to the poll and it's gonna say that you don't, you, you had returned mail. Thank you. Bailey, do you have any other big, big ones on your list? Sarah, like Sarah was trying to. Oh, yeah, oh sorry. I'm so sorry. Can I didn't... you hear me? Yes. No, it's fine. My audio kind of lags a little. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is kind of a, like a more logistical question, I guess, but I live in St. Charles County and they announced that neither poll workers nor voters are going to be like required to wear um, masks on voting day. And so I was just kind of curious, like Boone County's um, like rules on safety and how we can ensure that both poll workers and voters are safe if they choose to vote in person. That is a great question. So we do tell our poll workers if they're gonna work that they need to wear a mask. Um, we have masks available. The Secretary of State's office gave everybody masks. So we all have enough masks to give to poll workers. And then uh, we also have some face shields available too. And um, the, in terms of the voter situation, we highly encourage them. We place signs that they are encouraged. It's one of those situations where I don't wanna put a poll worker who is just trying to volunteer their time and get involved in elections in a situation where they have to start enforcing things with voters when they're already trying to enforce electioneering rules and things that are already getting people's tempers up. So um, we have not had any major problems in terms of compliance with things. For the August election, uh, I, I wanna say there were like four instances that I ended up hearing of that I had my um, poll worker manager reach out to the polling place and tell the judge, you know, put your mask on properly and stuff like that. But otherwise, um, what I heard and saw through social media, I spent my whole day going through social media, seeing what the tags are and everything, because I know that people would rather go to social media than tell me what's going on. <laughs> so I, I try to figure out if, if there are major problems through that. Um, the other thing that we did was invest heavily in trying to get a uh, setup where we have as many precautions as possible. So we've got plexiglass that goes in front of the election judges between the voters. Um, and then we hired a bunch of high school students that we're also doing again for November to clean the polling places so that there was always like a presence of somebody cleaning and disinfecting. And we had a ton of hand sanitizer too. So. We are doing that again. Um, I think we learned a lot between the June and the August elections on how to do more things safely and uh, had heard things about, you know, well, I wish you had more hand sanitizer bottles or somebody didn't wipe down this pen in between. Cause the election judges all, for June, everybody was trying to protect themselves. So they were like, hey voters come and like, put your ID up against the plexiglass. Well, then the voters were like, how many people have touched the plexiglass before you've cleaned it? So we've had to strike a balance in trying to train election judges to do what they're supposed to do uh, so that everybody is protected and not just the election judges. Um, but I, I, feel, I feel really good about it. And we have not had, we haven't had one of those calls that I dread that are like, well, we, Got a positive case to your polling location. Some some counties did have that and they had to deal with that, but we have not had any. I do just want to say, I think that that is a fantastic way for a high schooler to spend the afternoon. <laughs> I don't know if they enjoyed it or not. They seem to enjoy it and we pay them. So it's not like we don't, we don't make them volunteer their time for nothing.
Anybody have any other questions? Just out of curiosity, so in the event that someone did test positive after visiting um, one of your polling locations in, in Boone County, what would happen after that? So um, in the discussions I've had with the health department, you're only considered a close contact if you've been within six feet for more than 15 minutes. Uh, so up until this point, I don't think there's been a voter in a polling place for more than 15 minutes, really, because it, it just doesn't take that long to vote. Uh, you might stand in line for a while, but when you're actually doing voting by the time you get into the building and all of that, it just doesn't take that long to fill out the ballot normally. Um, so if that were the case, then we could, we know when people check in because the poll pads have what times that people check in. So if we absolutely had to go through that, I mean, we could, we could certainly go through that. Um, but more often than not, what I think would probably happen is it would just kind of be a little announcement in the news that said like, hey, if you were at this polling place, there was a positive case that went there. Um, but the health department or whoever the contact tracers are, interview them. So if the person themselves said, well, I was only in the polling place from like 6.05 to 6.10, then they're probably not, the health department's probably not even gonna say anything. If we had a poll worker be positive, that would be a different experience. <laughs> I'm sure. Anybody else? Uh, if you don't mind, I have a real quick technical logistical type question. Um, and I was thinking about this the other day, actually. Um, but so it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that elections in the United States are primarily a state by state process. So I was wondering, what is stopping like a college student, say from like Illinois, from requesting an absentee ballot in Columbia and also trying to vote in person in Columbia? Like requesting an Illinois absentee ballot. Right, and then trying to also vote in person in the state of Missouri. So um, one of the things that the states have engaged in is a consortium called ERIC, which is the Electronic Registration Information Consortium. And it, to, it, it's basically run by the states that are in it. So all of the, all of the states in it have some sort of representation on this board. And they all, in order to be in it, they buy into the fact that they all have to provide their voter files. So all of the voter files get um, hashed twice and then combined with DMV information and the national change of address information. And they check for potential out-of-state duplicates. Just like we, uh, so Missouri has a statewide voter registration system. It's the same process to make sure that we don't have in-state duplicates because you can move from one county to the other and register under a slightly different name like Jack instead of John, and it might not pick you up as a duplicate, so you would be registered in both counties at the same time. We have reports that we can run to potentially find those people based on last four digits of social and birthday and last name and all different kinds of matches. So those matches are then provided to us because it's the county level that uh, can change voter registration. The state of Missouri, the Secretary of State's office can't change a voter record. Um, it has to be us. So we are getting updates on a fairly regular basis to make sure that we don't have people registered in more than one place. Um, if it does happen, I mean, th that's also the kind of time where then after the fact, if those ever get caught, everybody gets voter history to attached to your record. So the last the last time you register to vote always shows up on our reports, or the last time you vote shows up on our reports. So if we're looking at these and it says that you voted in November of 2020 in Illinois and in November of 2020 in Missouri, we're going to find you and <laughs> investigate that. Because it's not that hard. I mean, there, there, <laughs> there's very few ways that you can really get away with it now. So if you do it, you're going to get caught doing it, and then it's not really worth it because one vote really doesn't make 
like a huge change at the presidential level. Make, could make a change at the local level, but the local level you're not, people don't usually care enough to vote in two states in mayor races. Thank you. Well, um, this was incredibly valuable and useful and, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank yeah, you. anytime. That was great and good luck. You've got a big job coming up. <laughs> well, thank you all for being interested and wanting to get people registered. And um, I mean, you can definitely tell because I start seeing, you know, more voter registrations coming in and people drop them off and our online voter registration numbers go up. Uh, so you can always tell when there's some kind of initiative happening because we get a little surge from it. It's really exciting. <laughs>